Hey y'all, Dallas Moore here at the Soul Record Studio in Bright, Indiana. And I'm here today uh, with my hero, champion, and friend, my original honky tonk hero, champion, and friend, the great Billy Gant. How you doing, Billy? <laughs> I'm hanging in, man. And uh, good, to good to see you, man. Always, always. Great to see you. And we're here to talk uh, today about our brand new <laughs> album, No God of War Is, which we recorded here at Soul Records. And uh, this album features 10 songs. Um, that were written by Billy Gant, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about the, the uh, making of the album. And uh, we, me and you, go back a long ways, don't we, boss? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess uh, I don't know. I can't count how many years, but I can put. Uh, you were about seventeen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sixteen to seventeen, right that summer, and I was uh, thirty-eight. Yeah. And. Uh, we met in uh, Norwood, Ohio, at a, a little club I was working with a, a, my band um, called Dodie's. Yep, Dodie's Lounge. And, uh, <laughs> every, uh, you know, it's the roughest little joint I ever played, and I played some rough ones because they enjoyed fighting me. <laughs> and Friday and Saturday, you can expect a barroom brawl. Everybody get involved. But uh, one night I was working, and I looked up and uh, he, he, I see this young man with long blonde hair coming up <laughs> and uh, carrying a case. And I thought, great, young talent. I love it. And uh, big smile. And uh, we talked. Sure, you know, get up and play. You know, you can use my guys or, or you can bring your own guys, whatever. Now, Dallas is a real rookie. <laughs> I had just got my first guitar um, the year before when I was 16, so yeah, <laughs> we was yeah. very early, early stages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> early talent uh, with a, a, a great desire to perform and put it out there. No fear, no fear whatsoever. And the interesting thing about that period when I first met Dallas, he would come in, uh, was the way the audience responded to him. Usually, you know, you got the band up there cooking and you get off stage and the stage is hot and you bring up, you know, a, an inexperienced performer. Uh, the, the, the people usually turn away. With Dallas, this is what I remember. He held their attention. They loved him. And I, I was watching him, I thought, yeah. This guy's going to be a young, uh, he's going to be one of those uh, Southern rocker kind of kids. <laughs> I, I didn't know uh, his background and love for country music and, and bluegrass. Um, and that's how I met Dallas. And uh, we formed a, a lifelong friendship. That's right. I'll never forget walking in the Dodies, well, which was a very small little honky tonk. Yeah. Um, but at the time, in my young mind, it was as big as the Astrodome, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you can picture this, I walk in and the place is packed wall to wall. This was on a school night, mind you, when you all were the house band there. And uh, uh, we snuck in, and uh, we was, of course, underage and wasn't supposed to be in, in such a place. <laughs> and uh, uh, I come into places just packed and the joints jumping, and I look up there, and I see Billy Gant, and he's he's dressed head to toe in black leather and... and uh, Back then, everybody that was a house band, they had like a, what they used to call a bunkhouse rail up, uh, you know, in front, on the front of the stage. And, and I'll never forget Billy doing a headstand on this bunkhouse rail. <laughs> and uh, uh, he was standing, you know, on his head. He does a backflip off of there, and he had a 100-foot-long microphone cable, gets the two prettiest girls in the place on each arm and goes sashaying through the crowd singing his song. And my mind was blown, and I go, I want to be that guy when I grow up, you know. <laughs> and uh, that was my first time meeting um, Billy Gant, and like I say, it has went on to be a no, lifelong no, friendship. No wonder, no wonder they wanted to fight. <laughs> no wonder they wanted to fight. Um, so it was, a, it was a 
A great time. And, you know, right, right, right you know, during those, those years and, and the years, you know, directly after that, um, you were just, you know, at, at, you know, at the top of your game, you know, you were, you were working with folks like Ernest Tubb and uh, David Allen Coe and Johnny Paycheck and Hank Jr. and, and so many more, you know. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about that period. Uh, it was just exciting. Uh, to me, it was a gathering experience to see how the, the, the big timers do it. You know, to get there early, you know, they'd come into into town, Cincinnati, Ohio, or northern Kentucky, and the kind of, uh, you know, this uh, outlaw country music had been in, unleashed on the world and uh, in the 70s, and, with, and that's where I started with outlaw country, and someone once said to Billy Gant was an outlaw before there were outlaws, and I guess that's true because I had my own ideas about performing. Yeah. And uh, young and wanted to shake things up, but when the when those kind of acts would come into town, I was the the guy to open up for them with my band, the Vigilantes, and I would. Uh, Love that because I could see how they were doing it, right. and that's where I wanted to go. Yeah. Um, so it's always learning. Yeah. Um, and then the show would be over, and it was back to the joints. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> back to the ballrooms again, like yeah. the Hag used yeah. to say. <laughs> and uh, um, it was all good. And uh, by the way, Hank Jr. is the nicest. Uh, Star, I ever met. All right. Uh, <laughs> Old Boogie would say boogie woogie. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he, you know, he was. He was. He was very nicest and most generous, and welcome, welcoming performer. Like he had all the time in the world, but he's at the top right. of the charts, and it's like right. very, very encouraging. So. Uh, I'm headed for rehearsal um, February. We just cut an album of original songs, all kinds of different songs. And you were just at the top of your game at the, during this time. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great time, I yeah. remember. You know? Yeah, it was, it was a fun time and exciting and uh, encouraging, you know, because you're always trying to go forward. February 1st, 1995, uh, car wreck. In the afternoon, I was on my way to pick up my bass player, uh, Huck Lowen, and uh, <laughs> that was the end of that. And it took, uh, uh, it was uh, diagnosed as a traumatic brain injury. And Uh, I could have found better ways to spend the next 13 years, but yeah. there was really no way out. Uh, all hope was gone, and the only thing left was prayer. Um, and uh, 13 years later, I woke up one morning, and my prayers were answered, and uh, I came down and said it to I can't even look at myself in the mirror. I hadn't looked at myself, you know. I had been basically in a chair and uh, a recliner. I'd also broken my back during that period, during the wreck. And um, I looked at myself in the mirror and I go, well, I was 47 yesterday when I had this car wreck. Now I'm 60 years old. Yeah. What am I going to do? I looked in the mirror and so I sat down at my kitchen table and I'm fifty thousand dollars in debt. The the marriage is over, of course. And uh, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> and I said, Well, I'm gonna write my way out of this. But the problem was I really didn't know how to <laughs> to write a song. And I knew that. Uh, I had tried to write, and it, but for any 
young writer out there, you know that there's a period where you don't even suspect anything, and you have to learn. So, I had nothing but time. So I started teaching myself how to find the chords, because I didn't play guitar. I was a front man, I was a singer. And uh, I hired great guitar players. In fact, eight of my vigilante band members are now in Hall of Fame somewhere. Yeah. Great players. Um, so I started the, uh, the transition from performer to songwriter with Dallas in mind because Dallas now was no longer 17. He had uh, got his education and started doing what we all do in order to learn how to do this performing and I found out that he was really, he was as a 17 year old um, inexperienced performer now. He's working with uh, uh, Co and uh, uh, Willie Nelson and, and, uh, and some others in there that, uh, that I thought I'll write songs for Dallas, maybe he would want them. Because it's the old outlaw, the original outlaw, and the new generation. Right. It was, it didn't die. Right. No, no, it did not. <laughs> it just. It continues to grow, it, you know. Yeah. And you became such a prolific songwriter during that during that time, and that's why this album, No God More, is for me. The way I always describe it when I'm talking to people, um, it's literally been over 20 years, an album that's literally been over 20 years in the making and a true labor of love. You and I have been talking about me cutting a full album of, of your songs literally for since, you know, um, the early 2000s, you know. Yeah. Um, and so you were doing all right on your own. <laughs> we, 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 we've been... Uh, Making making a few records, and uh, we always keep trying to keep kick the can a little further down the road. Um, and I've always it seemed like the timing was never right until until it was, and that time is now. You know, um, it's like the moon and stars and our schedules finally all yeah. aligned to make to come together and make this record. No yeah. God and War is. And, um, uh, I knew when I was writing the songs, I knew something was going good was going to happen. Yeah. But it all depended on me learning how to write a song. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I th I'd say you learned pretty well. <laughs> thank you. You know, I spent, for the next four and a half years after that that awakening in December 15, 2007, uh, just shy of 13 years, um, you know, it was, I, I had no other way out because I, I still had the heart to contribute so, so I had to reinvent myself yeah and uh, I would spend 15 18 20 hours a day writing uh, filling up notebook after notebook uh, learning uh, how to be a songwriter and uh to me, your the characters uh, that you have in in each of your songs are are so cinematic. It's like every song literally could be made into uh, not just a music video, but, but a full blown <laughs> Quentin Tarantino movie. You know, um, um, from the from El Capitan and Benito and No God Amores to uh, the murderous bastard that is Hezekiah Burden. You know, um, to um, the Ballad of Reuben Dix and uh, the, just the characters um, and the pictures that you paint, you know, yeah. um, with these songs. And each, 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 it's not at all a concept album. Um, each each song stands on its own and it's is like its own little movie, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's, uh, it has to be different. It, yeah, because they, they, and it's so great to be able at this time to tell these stories and tell your story because I've always felt that 
I'm, your life should be a should be a movie. I mean, you know, it, uh, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, worthy of, of of your story needs to be told, and I'm yeah. glad that uh, we're able to finally hear yeah. and be doing that at yeah. this time. Well, I was dedicated like you were at a very young age. If you would have asked me at six years old, what do you want to grow up to be? I would have said a singer. That's all I ever wanted to be. Yeah. And uh, from the time I was six years old, that's what's going on in my mind. Yeah. Um, how to get into show business. You know, how to, where do I start? Well, it started with jam sessions around Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. And that's where I started finding musicians. And those jam sessions were filled with, were run by older musicians and their crew. And I was always the last one to get up these jam sessions. Yeah. You know, it's like 10 till 2, get the kid up. <laughs> and I used to sit there and go, damn, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. And that right there, that desire to play, and, and when a young guy like you would come in, it was like, I want you up there. Right. I want you to have the benefit of experience because I know experience the best teacher. Yeah. And uh, Well, you, you definitely did that for me and passed along. And uh, uh, from those days all the way to today, whenever I talk about Billy Gant, I always say my original honky-tonk hero, champion, and friend. You were, you were literally the first person, um, you know, um, that I looked up to to become a lifelong, you know, influence and mentor. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty cool when your heroes come your friends. Yeah. And we've been out of a long time now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are periods in my life where I saw someone and go, I can do that. Yeah. And it's just going to take me a while to learn, but I can do that. And you sort of find your way. Right. Um, your natural way into uh, performing. And then I always wanted to, I always wanted to be the best performers and the way I approached it was to make as many mistakes as I could every night right um, to find out what not to do yeah and uh, in in that period in that of my life where I had a certain goal to to become a performer and so forth and so on which had nothing to do with the uh, you know why we're here the writing in. Yeah, that is the last great frontier, and there, hopefully there's a lot of young uh, writers out there that uh, are are looking. It take the time to learn, you know. A, a writer writing can be a lonely business um, because you're sitting and you're writing and. You want to be alone right. with your thoughts and your imagination and the, what's happening on this page in front of you. So, you know, just don't don't give up. Don't give up. Continue to, to learn how to write. I don't. I'm not one of those guys that says, "Oh, the muse came down and hit me with a song," and 20 seconds, 20 minutes later, I had it. Uh, it. You can't, you can't wait on inspiration. You know, you have to roll up your sleeves and and tackle this thing called songwriting. And when it comes to this album in particular, No God More Is, the none of these songs were co-written. You you wrote all, all all ten of these songs by yourself. And so fast forward into the the way we the way we made this record. It all started with myself and uh, Nick Geesey and, and and Billy sitting around Billy's kitchen table at his home and fleshing out the songs. Uh, we, I think we started with 31 songs um, that, you, that you you played for us. Yeah. And, and then uh, we worked everything out and we got 10 of, of those those that group of songs that, that just really fit well together. Yeah. And then we got here... Um, to Soul Record Studios, and, and we brought in my band, um, and we did the entire record here in-house um, with us, 
and which featured Nick Giese on lead guitar, and uh, also uh, he played acoustic guitar, mandolin, and uh, dobro on the record. And it's got strings. Yeah, yeah. If it's got anything with a string, uh, yeah. Saint Nickel, he, and and he just uh, blistered it, you know. Yeah, I, met, and, I met Nick now. He was 22, 23 years. Yes. Old. Oh yeah. You and you and you and Nick have a great, great relationship, and so that's also been another great attribute uh, to this record is everybody that played on this record in one way or another has a connection to to you um we have paul priest um who's um, on bass guitar from breckner county kind of kentucky and, and harmony vocals and uh our brother mike bernal from austin texas on drums and uh mike owens from louisville kentucky um on harmonica and then the only person outside of of my band the dallas moore band that we brought in um was uh, the great ricky and i to play rockin um, ricardo <laughs> rockin ricardo and uh ricky ricky played all of the piano and organ parts and uh it's kind of full circle for ricky as well to be involved because he uh in the early stages of his career he played piano for Billy Gant and the vigilantes right yeah, yeah and this 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 group that you have assembled uh, musically not to mention brian at this point yeah but the you know these are not only just road pickers but these are studio musicians of the highest quality and to listen to the album and you stay true to each song uh, instead of trying to do something else with it and make it and manipulate it you stay true to the song and with the, the group you have assembled this is the Dallas Moore Band today is an incredible uh, group of musicians, talent, dedication. And I came in to the studio the first day you were starting. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get a feel for what was going on. And I saw the enthusiasm there. And uh, I knew that I didn't just leave these guys alone. Right. And we we did all the, the tracking here. There was minimal, if any, overdubs. It was, we, we really just got the, got the performances of each song and, and, and tried to bring this. The, we, we fleshed out the arrangements, you know, beforehand, and then we just rolled tape and let it rip, you know, yeah. and uh, felt like we caught lightning in a bottle, you know. And uh, yeah. um, so very, very, you know, e excited to have this out and we hope y'all will check out um, our new album No God and More Is featuring the songs of Billy Gant and uh, Billy I just want to take a minute here to thank you for um, your vision and um, your creativity and, and and for trusting us with your songs and letting us tell the story of the songs and, and tell your story through No God and More Is you know I, I never I never I wrote the songs and I could hear him in my head, the arrangement, the drums, and so forth, and, you know. But until I heard the album, where I could just sit back and listen, it was like, wow, wow. That's what they sound like. Yeah. With the top of the line musicians and, and, and uh, vocals and, you know, Dallas's leadership. Um, and, and my my good friend Nick Giese, uh adding his talent, which never ends. Um, and listen to the rhythm section um, and the, the, the musicianship is just it's like, wow. That's the way it's supposed to sound. <laughs> That's the best of the best, man. Yeah, man. Well, we appreciate y'all. Uh, check us out. No God and War is available at DallasMore.com on Soul Records. And uh, Billy, well, thank you so much for spending a little time with us today. And uh, thank we'll, you for being Dallas we, Moore. Thank you for being Billy Gant. <laughs> we'll see you down the road. Adios, amigos. <laughs>